Good afternoon, or almost good evening now that we're getting darker. <laughs> the weather, the, the, time, the light, daylight is, I should say. Um, welcome to my broadcast. This is episode number 886, and the topic today is about truth. It's going to be a deep topic, maybe, or it might be very simple. But the choice is basically, do you tell your truth, or do you hide your truth, and what reasons do you have for either one? So we're going to have some fun with this one. Well, it will be fun, but it might be some exposure happening. Um, <laughs> carefully, of course. So... Um, first of all, hi, welcome to my broadcast. Let me introduce myself so you know I am what I'm about. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, spiritual guide, author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, and I mostly, mostly help women create balance in love, life, and business. Sometimes I work with men, but usually it's women because they're willing to learn. I'm not going to get into that one today. Um, so I've done the, 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 being a passionate champion for the divine feminine started these talks for me almost three years, very close to three years ago now. And at the time, it wasn't the name it became, but they've become over the last three years, messages from the masculine inspiring feminine heart. So it's usually, again, messages from myself into the feminine. So, hi Mary, um, truth, true through all time or just an honest share? Let me explain. I've got some, there's some piece I wanna to speak to and some pieces I'm gonna frame. So I'll get to that. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, this is my daily Facebook Live, and I'll tell you all about the links and everything at the back end, presuming I get to stay on Facebook Live. A weird couple of days of Facebook Live, we'll see what happens. Um, yesterday I got cut off right in the middle of my clothes. Um, so if you watch that broadcast, that's what happened. And I was trying to do a dual broadcast with a friend of mine today, and we, we, we did it like 12 times, and we couldn't get it to work to do two side by side. So I'm trusting tonight it'll be okay. So, truth. That wonderful topic again this is episode eight, eight, 886 so i've got 14 left to get to 900 so about will be by the before the end of the month wow <laughs> lots of stuff going on um so i want to speak about truth today because it's something that's been on my mind because i spoke to, I, I read a post excuse me and i spoke to a friend of mine last saturday two two days ago about withheld truth and we're speaking about this in the framework of relationship primarily but you may be able to apply this to other places just so you have a, a sense of where we're going with this and one of the pieces I'll speak about is when we're unwilling to speak our truth, usually based on fear of something either not happening or fear of something happening. And I'll explain what I mean. Sometimes we're afraid to tell the truth because we might piss somebody off, whether it's a primary relationship or a friendship or a sibling or anything else, family member. Or we may be afraid to tell the truth because by so doing it might expose us to them in a way that we don't like. I mean, there's lots, of, there's lots of facets to this, but the bottom line is this, is if you don't speak your truth, it's going to, well, it's going to cause some discomfort inside. And I'm being polite. There's actually um, books talking about how when you don't express yourself and speak your truth, you start creating toxins in your system. And I'm not going to get down that path because that's not my focus and speciality, but there are people out there, if you do research on Amazon or other places, you'll find research about when you don't speak your truth or you don't speak up, you hold back on things, you start to stuff it down, it creates toxins in your system, which can lead to illness and ailments. So not to scare you, just let you know what I've, I've read. Okay, but I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on Facebook Live either. So this is something I've learned over the years of watching and observing from other people who teach this stuff. So now I'm going to break down what truth is as well in a minute, so I'm going to get to that one too. So the other part of this is also, is that a lot of times we're not going to speak our truth even to ourselves. I know I was one of these people, and you may know somebody like this if it wasn't you yourself, but there's many times I remember in my life I wasn't willing to tell myself the truth in terms of owning up to what I believed to be so, or standing up for myself because I knew the truth was there. I would actually sub, um, sublimate, sub, sublimate, subjugate, repress, whatever we call that, truth to avoid dealing with something or to avoid stepping into something, like stepping into my greater power, stepping into my truth, stepping into my next expression of my business, whatever that was many times in the past, less so now, thankfully, but many times in the past, I didn't have the courage, the confidence, the trust, or the vulnerability, perhaps the other word I'm looking for, to actually express the truth in situations. Now, again, this may apply to you, it may be somebody you know, but I want to make sure you understand that truth as a vehicle for expression and truth as a means to say elevate, not being the right word, but to stand in your authenticity and your integrity is a powerful place to be. 
and I've talked a while ago, I've known for a while, about living an authentic life or living in a place of transparency and authenticity. Truth is an anchor point in that. I should say truth, truth is an indicator of that. It's not an anchor point, it doesn't stick. Truth moves, by the way, and I'll tell you about that in a moment too. So I want you to consider for yourself the question simply, are you, are you telling the truth all the time? Are you hiding from the truth? Are you holding back on the truth? Are you saving the truth? Are you worried about hurting people's feelings? That sort of questionnaire I'm going to ask you to think about as I'm going through this, because if this is something you're not facing and not willing to own up to, you're missing out on a lot of things. And part of this, part of this, is you don't have necessarily the um, faith and trust in your own truth to have to express it fully. Now, back to relationships. Let's start. Let's start with that there. From, from one side of the point of view of truth, I know there are people who lie to their partners to protect themselves, like they were cheating and didn't want to admit to it, or they have a bad habit they would want to tell the partner about, or the feeling that they want to leave but they won't tell their partner because of the kids, these sort of things. That's a piece of truth telling that is a variable impact, to put it simply. But for many people, telling the truth is something they'd rather not do because they don't want to rock the boat. Now, first of all, when you tell the truth, you may not always rock the boat. Let's be clear about that. In fact, when you speak the truth, you might discover the other person has been waiting for you to say it and go, thank you for telling me. Now I can be more free. And one of the things about being, so speaking the truth is it is an, an, um, a gateway or a doorway to freedom in your relationships, in your life, in your own health. As I mentioned, no repression inside. You get to lift up and out. And I've talked about this before about when you hold back on saying things like imagine the beach ball being held on a water. If you have a truth or, a t or, a me or um, an expression of what you believe to be true, because it could be belief about truth, that you're holding back on, you're suppressing, is imagine you're holding a beach ball underwater. If you ever try doing that, like in a pool or something like that, you'll notice that it's very hard to keep it down there. Generally speaking, truth is hard to hold back down there too. So imagine if you're doing that with the truth, what you're actually doing is putting a lot of your strength, your energy and your power into a distraction from being real. When you speak your truth, when you express your truth, then you don't have to pull back on this stuff. And one reason why I like talking about truth is that, um, and I'm going to switch gears from truth to honesty for a second because it, there's an overlap. It's much harder to keep lying to people than it is to speak the truth. Because if you're lying to people, and you're not speaking your truth, you're holding many, many, many beach balls underwater. Now, you've only got two arms and two hands, at least most people have. Just checking, I don't know anybody with any more. So if you're holding down three or four beach balls, that's a lot of work to keep trying to keep them all down and you're back and forth. Like it's, almost, it's almost like playing the bongos, trying to keep them down. It's hard to do. And if you can pre keeping your truth down and lying to many people, that's how painful the energy is going to be. You're actually going to place where you have to give up. You'll be exhausted trying to keep that energy suppressed. So speaking truth, to be authentic, to be honest, as I'd also say, requires that you be willing to let go of that attachment to what happens. Because the biggest part of speaking the truth is it's not about making anybody else feel different, good, bad, or indifferent. Speaking the truth is to make you, is to help you be free and to express yourself. And the reality is when you speak your truth, it really has to, it has to be from the place of, I don't want to say uncaring, but it's got to be from the place of detachment from what they will feel from what you say. Speaking your truth may have consequences. Speaking your truth might have positive consequences as well as well as or instead of negative consequences, just to be clear. Now, I'm not saying you necessarily want to just blatantly tell people the truth because there's also ways you can speak the truth. That's another piece I'll get to. So the truth is something that, and frankly, is. There, there are big truths with a capital T, which is like, as, as Mary put it, truth through all time. Those are certain principles that hopefully everybody knows. But I'm talking about the truth in the moment of who you are. There's a framing that I've heard before how honesty or honest can be broken down into two words it, from Latin, which is own est, meaning to be one with what is. That's about as much Latin as I know. <laughs> but the framing of that is being honest is to be one with what's, what is true for you. So I believe truth is more like that in the daily expression of how you be in life and relationships. So in a way, just the honest share, it's, yes, Mary, it is core values. So, in, it, so it is an honest share in that sense. But speaking your truth, oftentimes, is a declaration of state. It's a declaration of your willingness or your unwillingness to be in a certain situation. If you're in a relationship, back to that point again, you may be in the place where you're speaking your truth means you're going to leave that relationship or the other person leaves. 
So being truthful can be challenging to your environment if it's something that you are afraid to do. Now, let me go back to the piece I was talking about with framing it. Sometimes you say your truth where it's like black and white, in your face, tough luck, that's what I'm feeling. Done. Alternatively, truth can be, um, I need to tell you something, can we sit down for 10 minutes and can you let me know when that's okay? And then you say, this is something that's been sitting on my heart and I want to share it with you. I don't know how you can receive it, but I want to say it because it's true for me. That framing is very different from, here's the truth, get over yourself. And let's be, true, let's be clear here. Both of those presentations have value in certain circumstances, but not everyone. Some people sometimes need to have truth rammed in their face, so clearly go, wake up, versus some people just need to be nudged a bit because they're so fragile, perhaps, or so unwilling to see it. But if you try to give them the truth in a way that is blatant, they might just shatter, emotionally speaking. So being able to give them the truth in a way that is digestible as well. Again, you don't have control of what they do with it, but you can at least frame it in a way that you think they'll receive it. Still truth, but it's packaged differently, so to speak. So for me, one of my big truths was only up to my work. One of my big truths when I was going through the journey, I mentioned this on um, Friday, uh, let's say Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday, I'm sorry, four days ago, I don't remember what the broadcast was. Um, I talked about my journey. Um, so that was episode number 882. So I invite you to go look back at that if you want to go see it. And I'll tell you again at the links, where you, the replay links at the back end so you can find it. Um, it's also in a group, by the way, I'm, I launched. So hi, Susie. Thanks for being back. So this thing about truth was that when I went through my own relationship paradigm shifting back in 2007, one of the things that became very clear to me, crystal clear, as I said, I shared in that broadcast, was that my, my focus, my work was supporting the divine feminine, was actually being a, in worship of and service to and standing for the divine feminine. That's why I say in my, my introduction, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's my truth. And it has been probably all my life without realizing it, but it's become adamant since 2007. So that's the truth I don't have a fear of declaring or speaking about always because they're, because people will hear it the way they want to hear it. If they want to shoot it down or argue with me, they can do that. But I know my truth and I won't give that up for anybody. And that's why I stand in that place. So truth can be a, a value, a statement of who you are. So what, what Mary said about core values, it is a declaration of who I am. At the same time, there are sometimes I'll speak truth to somebody which will scare the bejesus out of them. Because I also have a, a, a gift, <laughs> sometimes it's a curse, when I'm working with my clients especially, to see things when what they're saying or how they're being, that when I reflect it back to them and speak the truth to them, they have a paradigm shift. That's one of the gifts and the pains of being coaching with me, just so you know. So when they see what's happening, there's a shift that makes a difference that changes the life for the better. So what's that question, Mary? So can the truth from one person's, can, can the truth from one person predicate the truth from the other in relationship? So can the truth from one person predicate the truth from the other? Does that, are you talking about having one truth depend on another truth? Because usually it's not that way. It's always usually authentic individual truths that happen to either meld together, complement each other, or conflict with each other. Because truth in this context is more personal than global. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. Because when you said you predicate, I'm not sure what you mean by the, if you make it dependent upon. Well, I think you do, yeah, because predicate normally means depend upon. So I think that's what it means. So one person be truth. Well, okay, I think you've got something else you're going to say. Yes. So one, truth, one person be truth, and one person be truthful, you get the truth back. Um, one can hope. One can hope that when you're in a relationship and you speak a truth, the other person will give truth back to you. Again, it depends on delivery. If you confront them with truth, they might react and come out back to you with upset and emotion. Well, then again, that could be their truth as well. At the same time, you can couch it in a way that is landing for them so they can understand it. And you can invite their truth back so you can actually have the conversation. It's not like you, you give them the truth and you sit and wait and hope it comes back. You can actually say, you know, this is what I feel is my truth. I'd love to hear what's true for you. So you can make it, you can make it that invitational so have that work. And that can be, again, any relationship, parent, child, sibling, primary relationship, family dynamics, parents, all that sort of stuff. Let me speak to that parent thing for a moment. Um, I've been writing today because I'm actually launching a new, um, it's, it's finally melding, it's been taking a while to come together. But I was talking to one of my, my accountability partners on Friday. What stuff happened on Friday? Um, and we were talking about, or what I'm talking about is, is I want to create something for the holidays. Not a not a package or a gift, but it is a gift in a way. Is I'm launching something. Start. It's going to be February. February it's going to be November fifteenth. It has to be November fifteenth because it's going to run for two months through November fifteenth to January fifteenth, covering Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. 
because those three dates for a lot of people, as much as they're fun, wonderful holiday celebrations, can bring up lots of stuff for people. And so speaking truth to parents when you go home for Thanksgiving may be challenging. I'm not saying you have to do that this Thanksgiving. I'm not, not saying you set you up for pain, for pain and suffering. But what I am saying is one of the things I'm looking at doing is is providing an eight week safety not want to say safety net support system through the holidays. So when you go back to holidays, because a lot of people now with the Christmas decorations going up, people are starting to feel happy and nervous at the same time. I'm not sure why. Because the idea of going back to seeing their family again brings up all the stuff from the past. Maybe you're single now after you got divorced and your family's judging you for not being in a relationship. Or maybe you go back to your family, family of, of origin, parents, and remember stuff happened in your childhood that was painful. I'm not saying everybody has that experience, but if you do, this new thing I'm launching, which is called Thriving Through the Holidays, is basically a two-month support structure that will help you get through the holidays. Um, it's going to be weekly calls and everything. It's going to be a bunch of different stuff. But I'm putting it together now. I'm writing the description. So it was on my mind talking about how to talk to parents and how to be in that relationship. So if that's interesting to you, message me over, so, over social media. I have no, no website, no sales page, nothing set up for it because I haven't finished it yet. But if you're interested in you getting in, get in early, I'll, I'll do an early bird special, I guess. Um, it'll launch the middle of November, so in, two, in basically a week and a half. So if you're information about that, reach out to me. Um, but that's the thing is that speaking of your truth, getting back to what I was talking about, can be challenging with family members where you've got a very long-term steeped experience where truth wasn't spoken. So how you frame it, how you present it might be challenging or it might be required. Again, that um, introduction and preparation to invite them into a space where you can tell them the truth without scaring them too much. This is why truth is a... I mean, I'm, uh, I've heard so many times do people do talks, they, like, they, they say they drop truth bombs. Well, sometimes it feels that way. Dropping the truth can be extremely explosive and painful. But you can also drop truth in a way that is more palatable and acceptable when it's given in a way that is from a place of love. So combine your truth with your love, like gift wrapping your truth within love, then you give that to somebody, it'll land much, more, much better than just going truth at them like that. That'd be a splat, that wouldn't be so good. So I hope this is making some sense. There was another piece in that was coming through, what was it? Well, this is the thing, this is the piece I want to put in here as a PS, because it's one thing that started this conversation in the first place for me, is sometimes speaking the truth is the declaring the intention to leave a relationship. Sometimes speaking the truth is so hard to do because the pain of being in that relationship is so great, you've got to say, you know what, I can't do this anymore. And your truth is that you need to leave. That can be challenging, I understand. If you've had one of those in the past, and I've had a couple in the past, and I've had it done to me a few times in the past too, just to be transparent, it isn't easy to hear. I know, but it's also important to do to free both partners up for the next step. So truth is a freedom technique. It's a op door opener. It's, an, it's a methodology to change paradigms. It's also a gift you can give either, either with barbed wire or with gift wrap. If you do it with gift wrap, i.e. love, it'll help a lot. So I think it's make some sense to you. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'll give you some replay information. You find the replay I mentioned on that Friday and also my previous ones. Before I do that, let me introduce, let you know some links will be in the comments. Again, contact me over social media if you want to check out or get more information on the Thrive Through the Holidays uh, course, program. It's a group thing. I don't want to call it a coaching program. It's a support, it's a support system. So that's, com that's coming out in 10 days. I'll tell you more about that shortly. Secondly, um, or first in the links I'll put in the comments, is I'll put a link in the comments, in the comments for you to reach out and have a chat with me. Because if you're looking for some help in how to navigate this with relationships, how to get where you want to go, if you don't reach out for support, it may be harder to do. As I mentioned, when I work with my clients, and something I've heard a friend of mine just say a bit earlier in the broadcast himself, he said that basically if you are someone um, working with a coach, that coach needs to let you know, and I'm letting you know as well, that if you work with me, there is no question or no situation that's too scary, too silly, too inane, or any of that stuff.